Three simple Xtool D1 maintenance checks. Welcome back to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg, and in this video, we're going to check three of the most common maintenance items to keep your D1 up and running. Let's face it, we would rather create projects on our D1 laser rather than spend time performing simple maintenance checks. But doing these simple maintenance items helps ensure that projects turn out great and batch jobs all look the same as intended. With that covered, let's go ahead and jump into it. First thing we're going to check are the gantry rails. And what I mean by the gantry rails on your D1 machine is the rails that the machine can move back and forth on. We want to ensure that these move freely and that there's no sticking points or gummy points that should feel smooth and consistent from end to end on both sets of tracks. Here's a close-up view of what these tracks look like and where they're located. On the one side we have the rail along here. There's also another one on the top side. And when we move to the other side, we have the same thing. There's a rail on the bottom and a rail on the upside. Looking at the front, the laser module, there's a rail on the top, of course, that you can see, but there's also a rail on the bottom. So all together, there are six rails that we want to check to make sure that they're clean. And what I like to do when I first start out is I just take a clean cloth and I just wipe down each rail and I'll see that I do have a little bit of accumulation of debris on there and that is perfectly normal. And I'll go around and I'll catch all of the rails. After I've cleaned the rails I can also take a finger and just run that along the rail and I want to make sure that it's free of any debris or anything that would gum up the track. Here's an example of some small debris that's on the frame. Little particles like that sometimes is enough to go ahead and cause a hiccup on the track. Along with checking all six guide rails, we'll want to check all three guide wheels on each set of tracks, whether it's on the left side, the right side, or on the laser head itself. Sometimes there's a little particle that can stick on the wheel and you will feel that each time that wheel comes around. So the easy way to do that is again take a cloth and just move this back and forth and you want to feel that wheel rotating underneath your cloth. And we'll get all of these. Some of these are hard to get at so I just place a finger up by that guide wheel to see if I can tell if it's clean. And what I like to do once I have the rails initially cleaned off with a dry cloth. I like to go back with some isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol also works very well. And again, we'll just repeat that same process. We'll wipe down each of the six rails. And while this dries for just a minute, this is a good time to like and subscribe the video if you like the content that this channel produces. It helps people like you find great content like this. Okay, rails are dry. Next, we can move on to the silicone grease that comes with your D1 X tool. I see a lot of questions on what this is for, and this is just for the rails on your machine. Now, this small tube will last you many, many years. And just like many of the other projects that we do on this channel, just a small dab will do. So we'll get a close up of that. And that's enough to do one full set of rails on a side. And I just apply this by hand. And I like using this method because I have that tactile, if I can feel a little piece of grit that is on the rails. We'll go ahead and get the top rail. And some of you may ask, can I use some type of oil or lubricant? And to that, I would say no, because there's some really good properties that silicone grease has. One of them is it repels dust, dirt, and moisture, whereas some of the other uh, lubricants, it'll repel moisture, but it will actually attract dirt and your rails will get dirtier much, much faster. 
And the next question might be, I have silicone spray, can I use that? And to that I would recommend not using that because a spray, that silicone will get all over your machine, all over your work area. That's just how silicone works. It has a tendency just to kind of spread out and migrate. And when it's in spray form, this stuff will actually make it all the way across the room. It's some pretty crazy stuff. And I mentioned dust with the silicone grease, and you might ask yourself as well, where is dust coming from if I typically have an enclosure around my laser tool? And that's an easy question. If you're burning through cutting and graving wood or anything that gives off smoke, that smoke, those particles are actually very, very large, and they can collect on these rails and actually form a little globule, and that's where you get those little sticking points. Once we're finished cleaning and greasing the rails, Let's go ahead and move all of our axes back and forth, making sure that they move smoothly without any hitches. And that looks good, silky smooth. Number two on our list is cleaning the lenses on our laser. I'll start out by removing any accessories so that I can remove the laser module from the gantry. Here's that air assist nozzle. And this is definitely a step that you want to do with machine power off. I have the latest generation of the 10 watt laser, non-pro edition. So this diameter is a little bit larger and it sticks out a little bit further. And there's two lenses on this newer version. There is a protective lens and this is just a flat lens. This is the lens that causes people the most problems. If you have an older machine where this diameter is a little bit smaller and the stack height is shorter on here, you'll have just the focusing lens here. This lens too also removes. And this lens does have a curvature, so if you somehow get them mixed up, they do have a height difference. What I like to use again is you can use isopropyl alcohol. That's kind of the preferred thing to use. I have denatured alcohol. That seems to work pretty well. And I have some of that in a small container already. So once again, kind of the motto of this uh, channel is I've got a Q-tip here. The motto is just a dab will work. So I have just a little bit of alcohol on this Q-tip. And I want to just gently move in a circular motion around on this protective flat lens. And I'll make a couple passes back and forth to get the center. And once that is dry, I'll hold that up to a light to make sure that there's no lint and there's no cracks or holes burned through this piece of glass. Every once in a while, you may have to clean the inside of that lens, but that's a pretty much a rarity. On the newer D1 machines that have the two lenses, the focusing lens, you'll very seldom have to clean that one. It's still good to check, but the protective lens is the lens that's going to keep all of the dust and smoke residue from getting on this more sensitive and more expensive lens. My focusing lens looks good. I'll go ahead and screw that back on. And my protective lens, I'm looking through that, and I do not see any lint left behind. I don't have any burn marks or anything like that. If I did have some residue that's on this lens and I can't clean it with a Q-tip, sometimes what we'll do is we'll take a small container of that alcohol and we'll actually just drop that inside and put the cover on and let that sit over diet. And usually the next day that will get enough of the residue off that it will work. Perform this step at the end of smoky projects or every two hours when you're doing a lot of engraving. Once you have a cleaning routine down, you can adjust your timing because you'll see how much buildup is on the lenses, particularly if you're not using the air assist kit. If you're like me and you run your air assist kit basically on everything, I check this uh, daily, but I may only need to clean the lens about once a week. The air assist kit really does make that much of a difference. 
Number three is cable inspection. Oftentimes overlooked, but symptoms can include intermittent or sporadic motor behavior. And by this, I mean when the motor is running back and forth with a loose connection, it may hesitate or hiccup slightly during that motion profile. And what that will look like on your project is all of a sudden, you'll see everything jump over a little bit and that will kind of wreck your project. Usually it's halfway through. On this step, there's no need to remove any of the cables. We just wanna do a quick visual check on that. On the back side of the motor, we just want to primarily look for that all of the motor connections look good. There's no fraying on the cable. We'll also do that on the other axes. We'll make sure that the cable looks good. On my machine, you'll see that I have a cable tie around the motor that has the cable going through it as well. I do this so that when the machine is running back and forth, it's the cable that's mainly taking the movement and not these delicate wires going into that small connector. Up on the laser module, X-Tool has that built in for us by this handy little bracket up here that most of the movement is focused up here and not at the connector. After I've inspected the wires at the connectors for any broken ends or frayed wires, I'll look at the cables themselves to make sure that in my work area, there's nothing that these can snag on and create a focus point where, again, wires can break or fray. In general, I have all of my cables secured to the frame or the gantry to make sure that during operation, none of these wires can actually go underneath the laser module. Short and simple. Three simple and quick things to check on your D1 to keep it in tip-top shape. There's certainly more things we can check and I'll cover that more in depth in a future video. If you find this content helpful, please like, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. This really helps the channel grow and connect content to other viewers just like you. As always, have fun, be kind, and be creative.